The Average Camper's Adventures. Welcome back to Average Camper's Adventures. We are not in the wilderness today, and we're not in Willow. We are at Lazy Days, where we've taken Willow to get fixed, and we're gonna discuss, per request, on why we've chosen what we've chosen, what our thought process were when we were making our decision. All right, so many motor homes um, come with either carpeting or tile, and uh, we chose tile for a very specific reason. We like the tile linoleum styled laminate flooring types of floors because when you're traipsing in and out all day out in the fields out fishing and you're coming back with your gear the floors get very dirty and carpet harbors allergens and dirt and mold and a regular floor you can clean Okay, you can see on most of the slide outs, there'll be at least a section of carpeting for the slide out to be able to operate and for it to work correctly. So you will have that bit of carpeting in almost every motor home if you have a slide out. And that's a lot easier to keep clean compared to an entire floor where it would be very difficult to shampoo a carpeting or steam clean a carpeting on a regular basis to be able to keep up with the dirt that you're tracking in. All right, so for those that like to watch television at night, TV location can be really important. After a while, turning your head to uh, one side for a long period of time can get really uncomfortable. It can give you such a crick in the neck. <laughs> Here's an example of a functional living room floor plan arrangement for us. We have the TV, the fireplace, and a space for all your electronic equipment, such as DVD players and so forth, right across from the couch. Which is very comfy. It's very looks very comfortable. And as someone who does most of the cooking in a kitchen, there are lots of options that you can get. You can get the nice extended countertop space with the addition of these nice panels. Otherwise some people just have that and then you lose. Look at all that counter space lost for your stove top. There's also the choice of having like a convection oven microwave, which is what we chose, versus the standard oven. I don't do a lot of oven oven cooking anyway, so the convection oven microwave for us was ideal. Um, also gave us all that storage space down below that we would lose if we were just an oven. And then you would lose space up here because now you have a microwave that functions nothing else than a microwave. So we've got, for us, the best of both worlds with the convection of a microwave and storage space below. Reduced counter space for preparation. We can work here, as long as this up, or I have to work in this little corner. And I make a lot of mess. I have lots of space. <laughs> Some of the other things to look at when you go to purchase a motorhome is the thickness and the quality of doors. I don't know if you can see this slider. It's reasonable thickness on the slider. And then some of the doors you can see are also reasonable thickness. And they seem like good solid doors. Now some motorhomes, of course, to cut down on weight will have that pull curtain. Yeah, have pull curtains, which um, in our opinion don't seem to work as well. And a lot of the wood is thin. Much of it's particle board with a laminate covering over the top of it instead of a full piece of wood. Although you can um, reduce the weight of a rig, you also can uh, end up reducing the durability of the rig. There's another example of a drawer. and. Uh, just at first glance it looks like it's built pretty well until you start tapping on the bottom and it's a very thin piece of wood that could easily break 
So any any weight in this drawer could cause uh, cracking of the wood. Sometimes these faucets, in order to um, keep the weight down, are made with with just cheap material. A lot of times, uh, it's material that that won't last very long. They break easily. Um, you can see this a lot when you go around to some of the RV dealerships where these things have been twisted, turned, pulled, and and pressed on and they just don't last. So if they don't last sitting out in an RV uh, dealership for a month, how is it supposed to last when you're in the rig living in it? Some of the bay storage uh, doors, some of them can be very thin with very little insulation so you might uh, have a difficult time if you live in a cooler or cold area. Also um, some have pass-through storage some say that they have passed through storage, but they have a lot of stuff blocking your ability to store anything in that area. Okay, as an example on this door, definitely feel the door, feel the weight of the door. Because although this door looks like it is thick, I can tell you that when you tap on this door, it is as thin as can be and very, very light. It even Those flexes, it even flexes as you as you kind of wiggle the door a little bit. Uh, another example of a very thin Plastic. and poorly constructed door. Yeah, oh my. Take that for a couple thousand miles. Wow. Look at the quality of the stairs going into the coach. Um, some of them are, are very uh, thin and cheaply made. So when you go to step down on the step, it shifts around. Now this particular one is, is uh, uh, pretty well built. I don't feel it's not wiggling around very much. And so uh, for me, I'm six foot four and I weigh over 200 pounds. I need something that's gonna hold me. Okay, here's an idea of, of somewhat of a, a thin and and flexible stair. So just in general, the quality and the build of this stair is uh, a little bit on the thin, cheap side. So even when you walk up, you can feel the flexing of those steps. Okay, another thing to think about is your shower and bathroom layout. Some of them are separated, some of them are together. Sometimes the sink is in the bedroom. There's a lot of different variations we have a separate shower and bathroom scenario and uh, for us it works out perfectly this is an example of a shower and bathroom and bedroom combination for us we are a little bit more private people and we like privacy we like privacy so when you're going to the bathroom you'd like to be able to have some privacy now here you at least the, the toilet, toilet is in the closet oh. <laughs> Here the toilet, um, you have privacy, but obviously the shower is not. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're full-timing and one of you is working and the other gets up early in the morning to have a shower to get ready to go to work and you're trying to sleep. So your shower, your sink, and everything is a part of your bedroom. And I would think that the noise could be a problem. It would probably wake your partner up. Um, in that scenario. So if that's something that you might be doing in the future, you might consider having the separated bedroom, bathroom, and shower. Also in the showers, for Trish, she needs a place to be able to um, shave her legs. So a seating area is absolutely wonderful. And a shower that's one piece instead of multiple pieces and you'll be able to see that when you step inside of a rig where you can see the seams down at the bottom and on the sides of where the shower has been put together these tend to leak so a one piece shower is definitely preferred also it makes cleanup quite a bit easier because you get all that mold in the grooves of every one of those ridges where the seams are Here's the, an example of a shower that's more of a two or three piece shower where you have the um, seams around the bottom and these seams have a real tendency to either detach and allow water to get through 
or build up uh, mold. Water will get trapped in these seams and mold will build up over time. Much less the height. I don't even know if, you, Rob, you could get in here. And plus, if I went to wash my hair, I gotta do this. I can't even imagine shaving my legs in here. No, <laughs> I, I don't just, think it's I'm a very just... functional space. And I'm looking out over the top of the shower, so I, I'm not... The... Water and I have a good time together. We wash everything when there's water around. So I would drench this bathroom. <laughs> it would be flooded. <laughs> For um, something else you can need to consider is the comfort of the chairs, obviously. This, I just tripped over to get in my seat. So the size of the doghouse over the, I guess the engine area, uh, can be important as well as kind of functionality of your room and what you're going to have as far as GPS or iPods or whatever else your electronics that you have. What kind of availability is here? If you have a dog or a cat that wants to sit up here while you're driving, you know, that's something to take in consideration. Nowadays, having some kind of sturdy computer station is, is helpful. And for me, my height this is a little close. How am I supposed to really do anything? Yeah, you like to cross your legs sometimes Yeah. Uh, when we're driving down the road. And sometimes you even put your legs up on the dash. Yeah, and this would be... <laughs> oh. Yeah, now... So for me, this would be too tight. I don't have a lot of leg room. I don't really have that nice little... We have a, a nice little window down here I can watch the road. Um, that's not here either. So. Is there a storage area over there? No, no, there's so, nothing. So, on our coach, we have not only a storage area um, just here uh, to store things, maybe drinks or, or maps or whatnot, and uh, on this particular coach, there is no, no such thing. I see, uh, you know, on this coach, they have the storage area for some things like that up high, but as you're driving, you might need to reach something and it needs to be close enough. You can't stand up while you're driving to pull something out of, out of these overhead cabinets. Another thing that um, we liked in our coach was the height of the ceiling. Now, there are pros and cons to the height of the ceiling. When you're inside the coach, it feels very spacious. And for someone who's tall like myself, it's almost a necessity. But the con is that when you're going to a park, a lot of times they groom the trees at a height that's comfortable for most normal RVs. But since yours is a little taller, um, you might have a tendency to have to swerve around a lot of those lower branches. And knock off your antenna. And oh, Yeah, and knock off your antenna. <laughs> so you have to kind of decide whether that is important to you, but for us, we're tall people, and having that additional height inside the coach really makes a coach that's only 32 feet long um, seem very big inside and very comfortable for us. Awnings are fantastic, and it's a great way to have some additional shade while you're outside, keep the rain off of you and so forth. But some coaches have awnings that extend over slides and some do not. Ours does not. Our awning covers the whole side of the coach and um, it does not interfere or is over the top of one of our slides. So we have the entire space to sit under. So if you did have more than just a few people, uh, you'd actually have space, usable space under that awning. We also have an electric awning that is absolutely amazing. Getting out and pulling an awning out and setting it, adjusting it, um, can be a bit of a hassle. It's not impossible, but having that electric awning is absolutely wonderful and well worth the money. Here's an example of a slide that comes out underneath the awning. And you can see once the slide is fully um, extended, it takes away your actual available seating space underneath the awning, staying out of the element. Okay, so here's an idea of when we walked into a coach, what are the things that we're thinking about and looking at when we just first walk into a coach and see the general layout and the construction, what are the things that we 
notice right away. And for me, as soon as we walked into this particular coach, the smell, the formaldehyde smell, the construction smell is very, very strong in this particular coach. And some of them do not have that smell. So I'm not really sure why it's necessary or why one is different than the other, but it takes quite a while for this smell to come out of here. And if you are sensitive to these smells, it, you're not gonna be able to use the coach for a while and you're gonna have to have the windows open for quite some time sitting outside uh, to be able to get it out of here. Another thing to consider, which was really important for Rob and I, are dinettes. It's not something that you sit at most of the time, at least our family doesn't. So having a dinette that takes up all this space and retracts from the living space is not conducive to the way Rob and I camp, live, exist. So, you know, keep in mind how often are you going to spend at the table and do you really want to take up that much room for a table that you're not going to use all the time. So a pro, pro and con of this scenario is that it takes up additional space that you don't use on a regular basis. But the pro is that it gives you added storage below these seats, which for some people is a very nice additional storage. Many of these pull way out and gives you uh, quite a nice bit of storage. But in a, in a class A motorhome with the amount of storage you have in the outside bins, Taking up a lot of space with one of these dinettes uh, for us just did not seem to be the most practical layout. All right, some coaches have air conditioners that are kind of like your central heat and air in your home. And then some have some of these small portable units. And for us, we noticed the sound levels of one of the central heat and air units is far less than a single unit that you might find something like like this or a single unit that you might find where the blower is in the middle and you get an awful lot of forced air coming out and shoved either one side or the other. So this one is set up more like a central so that you have the air coming in here and the air coming out there. And so it, it does it does matter. When you are running an air conditioner and through the evening, in our pop-up, it was very, very loud. But in our uh, Class A motor home, you can barely tell that the air conditioner is running because it's so quiet. And as tall as I am, I am standing on my tippy toes. So there's no choice. Most people are gonna have to have a stair thing here so they can get up to their cabinetry. Yeah, you're about 5'9". Yeah. And I can definitely say, here, let me try. If I, I'm six foot three, six foot four, and even me reaching to my maximum height, I can't even reach the top at six foot three, six foot four. So keep that in mind when you walk into these coaches and you see all these cabinets and it looks so wonderful. Get in it and act like you're living in it. Reach up for things, move things around, sit down, um, do the things that you would normally do to see if it truly is a functional space. We're not big fans of floor vents. Um, difficult to clean, a lot of dirt goes down into those vents when you're sweeping. So we preferred having the vent along the side wall so that you wouldn't have that problem. And make sure that you don't mistake the heater vent for the toilet. <laughs> also on this coach, I noticed that we have nice pull down shades. And I cannot tell you of all the things that you spend money on, spend your money on shades like MCD shades that pull down. You have a combination of a solar barrier and a blackout shade. and this is only a blackout shade so there is no solar so you can't see out of these okay so these have the pull downs but they're only a blackout shade versus others that give you a solar shade so you can see out or the blackout shade or night shade so you can block out anybody from seeing you at night but an MCD shade is well well worth the money curtains although they can be very pretty get dirty and don't really provide you the 
seclusion, protection, darkness, um, solar protection that you may need. Yeah, I don't like curtains. No. They're pretty, but... Eh. We definitely are fans of the MCD shades. If you have uh, a large family or children, um, you may want two doors versus one door. One that goes back to the, chi uh, the kid's bedroom or to a bathroom, and then one that goes into the living room. Sometimes kids can get a bit messy, and you don't want them tra uh, traping through the uh, uh, living room uh, spreading all that dirt around you might want them to go directly to a bathroom so sometimes that that feature can be wonderful for families okay some coaches have uh, slides in the back of the coach and some coaches do not this is an example of of a coach that does not have a slide so this one's not too bad but the bed is small so that you have room on each side and something you may not be thinking of when you're looking at these rigs because it can be very overwhelming you can be like oh wow stunned by the beautiful pieces of work that they are open the doors because when i opened this particular door i hit the sink so this door doesn't open any further than this and it hits the sink yikes so open the doors, open the cabinets. Like Rob said, pretend you're living in it. And if you'll notice for us, the lowness of this bed would be quite difficult for Rob and I to be getting in and out of all the time with our height. We'd have to like bend down, roll up on our knees. <laughs> it's just a little low for us. It needs to be a little bit higher. Also, but keep that in mind. It would also give you a little more storage space under the bed. Yeah. And that's nice to have. What do you crop through the hole? I don't know. Look, this one has a doggy door. So if you are if you love animals and they're with you all the time, these people have even thought of a doggy door leading out to the um, garage. garage. Which you can't access, I don't think, from inside. No, not unless, unless you, you crawl, crawl through, through the, the doggy, doggy door. door. <laughs> so the dog gets all the conveniences. And something else you have to think about is what kind of refrigeration and freezer do you need? What kind of space do you need? Do you want a residential type refrigerator? Do you want a propane type refrigerator? And each one has its own pluses and minuses, but you have to decide for yourself on what is actually going to be beneficial for you. I am not a fan of these types of refrigerators. Uh, they're narrow. I didn't have good luck with them in the past. Um, keeping things cold. I like getting in my rig, my refrigerator's cold, I put my food away, don't have to worry about packing it in ice, carrying a cooler until it gets cold. But you have to decide what's going to work for you. A couple of the pro and cons of the residential versus the gas electric refrigerator is that one, we get a lot more space. As a pro, we get a lot more space. We get an ice maker. A con would be we have to run it off of electricity only. We don't have the option of gas. So if you're a person that's going to boondock a lot, having the option of gas uh, is, a, is a wonderful thing for your refrigeration. But you will sacrifice certain aspects um, with that unit because they tend to be smaller, they tend to take a long time to cool off, and it's hard to keep cold. Um, it's, it, yeah, it can be difficult to keep cold in, in real hot climates. Our, our residential refrigerator, we chose that because we wanted an ice maker. We wanted the extra space, and we took the sacrifice of having to run it off of batteries. So we'd have occasionally we have to run the generator to charge the batteries to keep our unit um, operational. Or, or, or if we have, you know, in a boondocking situation, we've um, managed to put together a solar system that will work as well. So pros and cons with either one, you just have to really do your homework and try to find out which one is best for you. And here's an example of the residential refrigerator. First, you notice size. I have some space. I have a big freezer and an ice maker. Yes, it takes up space, but for us, ice is very important. Yes. So. That was a big uh, selling point for us. It's what? two, three times the size of the last one we just saw. So if you have a big family that likes to eat, you may have to consider something bigger. 
Here's another example of a floor plan where you have a bed and although this is great as far as uh, creating space and utilizing as much space as possible there is no doubt you're going to have to crawl over your partner to get to the bathroom which is just here. So not exactly the most functional. Right. You, you can do it but for us this would have been a, a deal breaker for us. All right, here's an example of a good bedroom layout in our opinion and it is when there is a slide in the bedroom and the bed is facing just like this so as you walk into the bedroom you have space not only in front of the bed for dressing and so forth but even on the side of the bed not a lot but it's enough to get out if you have to go to the bathroom in the morning you can get up you won't disturb your partner you can see there's a side here as well so this is the slide and it really really makes a big difference in being able to have functional living in a coach another thing to think about is power outlets a lot of these coaches have power outlets um, that you can run off the inverter or off the generator or off of your shore power but the location of those power outlets are not always practical so when you walk into a coach, take a look at where they're located. Think about what you're going to plug in, what appliances you use, what electronic devices you may use, and see if where you're sitting, there's a plug, the type of plug that you need, and uh, how many there are, because you might find that you don't have enough. So here's an example That's a kitchen. of a kitchen. And our kitchen has three outlets with two plugs in each outlet. Now this kitchen has one plug or one outlet with up two high. plugs it's and it's up high. high. So this may not be the most practical scenario and I don't know if it's really safe to plug in a extension cord or one of these power strips to give you additional plugs around a kitchen area. So um, consider that when you're looking at, at your coach. On this one we have a plug down where the feet are at. So you're going to have to be really careful getting in and out. If you have something plugged in you're going to trip over the cord compared to having the plug up higher and out of your way. This is where they're putting in their gas. Which leaves them not a lot of options for pulling into gas stations. You really have to think because this is a big vehicle, barely pretty tall. All right there. Yeah, our gas tank is directly in the back of the coach so that we could pull in on e either either side of a gas station and still be able to access the uh, gas tank. Some, some people need um, a laundry machine in their coach. We do not have that option in our coach. And so far, a year and a half into it, we haven't felt that we needed to have a laundry machine in the coach. The places that we go normally have them, or we are looking at the option of a Eurego, which is a powerless uh, washing machine that'll allow you to do your laundry while you're on the road. The washer and dryer is wonderful, but it does use a lot of water uses a lot of electricity and it takes up quite a bit of space. And you lose your capacity in your waste, your gray tank, because it's all going to the gray. Oh, there's a perfect example of why not to have, here, let me get a close up of that. That cloth. Here's this cloth stuff. Can you imagine cooking and it's splattering right and there's a perfect example I hope of it's fire retardant. how this stuff can just can get just through. get disgusting and impossible how do you to clean. That? Okay, the, the paint is something to consider. Some coaches have a full body paint job and it does come at a price. But I can tell you that our experience is that our coach looks as new as it did the day we bought it. And some coaches that have just pinstriping or some type of decals on the side, it is far less expensive, but they do fade, wear, scratch over a period of time. And you get a rather old looking coach. There are some coaches out there that have full body paint that could be 10 years old and they still look just like brand new. 
let me show you an example of, of one that's not and, and how aged it looks. Now granted this Dutch star is probably several years old. I would imagine it could be upwards of, of eight or more, maybe ten years old. But you can see the you can see the the, the way that over time just the scratches and and so forth with decals how difficult it can be to keep this looking shiny and new so a full body paint is well worth the price if you plan on keeping your coach for a long period of time that's a nice scratch I mean, this is just from the water running off okay so if you like chasing your wife around the rig like i do then uh, this is the perfect layout for you We are in a Tiffin Allegro, very similar to the one that we have. And I'm going to have Trish kind of just walk through some of the things that we've talked about today and how our coach fit what we were looking for. Solid steps. Yeah, nice solid steps. They don't shift around. When you step on them, they feel like they're going to hold you. Really, really well done. Something else you should consider, especially if you're going to be boondockers or places where you don't always plug in LED lights less heat less power consumed so that makes a big difference especially if you're sitting under here you have the lights on you don't want to be getting hot and having to change that anyways refrigerator freezer ours is different our, our freezers on the bottom which is nice for me but look at all the space awesome you can see now counter space as we go across, lots Cabinets. of counter space. The cabinet height and depth. And how they attach. Believe it or not, some of some drawers, cabinets, and other types of coaches don't have good closure systems. So when you're going down the road, doors will fly open. We have not experienced that issue at all with our tipping so far. Another thing we thought about had to do with redundancy. And some coaches have um, only one air conditioner, one heat source. And so we picked a coach because our Tiffin Allegro has two air conditioners, two heaters. So there's redundancy. If one fails, you always have the backup of the other. And this was important to us so that if we were out on the road full time and one quit, we always had the other until we could get somewhere for servicing. This is a real nice peace of mind. Here's the reduced size doghouse like I was talking about. It's not so hard to get around or to maneuver around. Um, you still have space for all of your stuff like in the other place. The computer table with a little bit of storage underneath. So for, and the window. Which our dog used to really Jesus. love. God bless Lottie. We've got little side pockets for storage like quick maps. Um, I usually store my extra drinks down here, actually. Um, and then all of this awesome storage and these good cabinets with these... <laughs> really heavy duty. Really heavy duty. They are not opening. They are not opening over any bumps. Um, Notice the thickness of these cabinets. Real wood. They're solid, real wood. And again, yes, it's a little heavier, but we're talking about durability. And to us, this was a big selling point. It was a cabinetry that was solid wood and durable. MCD shades. You would not imagine how much they reduce the heat coming in that, from that sun during the day. Believe me, in Florida, you need them because it dramatically drops the temperature in here without having that sun penetrate all the time. You have your solar shade where you can still see through, but nobody can see in. And then you have your blackout shade. Which is vinyl and can be wiped clean. Now, ours are MCD shades. I don't know if this brand that's in this coach right now are MCD, but we've been really happy with ours by the MCD brand. But we have a shade on the main window that'll come down and uh, the solar shade and also a night shade. And this is great not having to fool with curtains 
to string across a, a large window as you're reaching you know across these dashboards and stuff like that this really makes life very very easy if you do a lot of kitchen prep obviously having the ability to put these on and cover what's needed is very very handy they're heavy but they're gonna last so another thing to consider is your countertop material if you do a lot of prep work or if you have a lot of people coming and throwing stuff down if depending on what kind of countertop you get it could scratch these are Korean style countertops. You can just buff it and it's like new. Notice the seals in the cabinetry. Nice, thick wood, solid, closed. I can't, if I'm not pulling on it, it's not coming out. Not that flimsy, nice and solid. Closed as well, no loose, not loose, any of them. So have, by having the convection microwave, I have gained all this extra space for storage. And there's nothing you can't do that I have found in a convection oven that you would only use a regular oven. So instead of having a microwave and an oven, I get the best of both worlds in one spot. The other options for tables, you have this style or the cadenza style like we have. We chose the credenza style for the extra storage space and the extra room that it gives you by not having this permanent fixture. And it also gained us more space in the living area. Okay, here's the credenza. And again, it gives you storage, computer station, all kinds of different things. And the table even pulls out so you can put two or four people. But if you're only a couple people, you don't need to use up the extra space. Some of the coaches have kind of an unusual uh, setup as far as turning lights on and off in the coach. And the one thing that, that Tiffin had designed, I think somewhere around 2014, um, was a kind of a, a, a panel that is universal. So no matter where you are in the coach, you can pretty well... A command center. Command center. Um, you can pretty well control the lights from anywhere uh, no matter where you're standing in the coach. So it'll give you choices of doing all kinds of things right here. And there's also one down here that will allow you to do the same thing as you're walking in the coach. And then there's also one in the bedroom that'll allow you to do the same. So this is a wonderful feature. It really makes sense because we've seen buttons located all over in these coaches. And half the time you can't find them. The TV, I'm not looking across kitchen sinks, dining room tables, I'm not getting such a prick in the neck. My TV is directly in front of my seating area. Okay, our preference was to have the bathroom and shower separate. So Good we shower. were happy with the one piece shower and then it was separate from our toilet and sink. So this allowed for a little bit of privacy. It also allowed for two people to be doing something at once instead of all in the same small space. Okay, so anyway, you can see we have the one piece shower. You have quality um, fixtures and plenty of headroom. No problem because of the tall ceilings. And you have a seat which makes my wife very happy that she can comfortably take care of shaving her legs and doing other odds and things. But you can see that the ceiling height is quite a bit different than some of the other coaches that we've been in. One word of caution for you ladies, if you're shaving your legs and you're sitting on the seat and the seat's a bit wet, you can fall out the door. Just be careful. <laughs> you know I that from personal out. experience. <laughs> okay, and then we have the bathroom which you can see is uh, plenty of space in here and the sink. So you can have somebody here in the bathroom, you can have the door open and uh, um, if you wanna have a larger space to you know, get dressed or whatever, you can leave the door open and close off this space with a slide instead, which is really nice. But anyway, that is, that is our personal preference of being able to have a shower on one side 
and the bathroom on the other side with the ability to close off the two spaces. Okay, here's an example of the way our coach is laid out as far as the bedroom, which we have found to be uh, a very functional um, layout. As you walk into the bedroom, you can see that there is space on both sides, allowing both people to be able to get out of bed without crawling over the other. The bed itself is a queen size bed, there's plenty of space for two people. Then you have quite a bit of space because of the slide out to be able to do your dressing here in front of the dressers. You can still not only open the dresser and get stuff out, but you can also dress in this space without any trouble at all. The television is in, a, in an appropriate space because the bed is opposite the television and not having to turn your head. We found this very, very functional. And here's the floor in the Allegro, which of course, like I said, we prefer having a tile floor because it's easier to clean up and a lot easier maintenance. Okay, so, you know, nice solid door. You're not getting, it's not wiggling back and forth. Solid, listen to that. It is completely thick and solid. Full body paint. Full body paint, which is gonna look like new for a very long time. Thick plastic floors in the storage bays pass-through storage bays, real genuine pass-through storage bays, nothing in the way. Our electric slides and hydraulic slides and then electric Awning. awnings. So overall, a year and a half into it, we are very happy with our purchase and are enjoying our travels. Join us next time on The Average Camper's Adventures.